your body grows bigger. Your mind must flower. It's great to learn. Cause knowledge is power. In Schoolhouse Rocky, the chip off the block of your favorite schoolhouse, Schoolhouse Rock. Come on, let's follow them down to that place of renown. They call it the Conjunction Junction Diner. With Schoolhouse Rocky and friends, you know the fun never ends. Cause everyone's a Schoolhouse Rock headliner. Extra! Rocky gets the diner cooking in short order. When he feeds that video jukebox and nickels, dimes, and quarters. Conjunction Junction, what's your function? Working up multiplication to music. Rockin' with grammar and science and history. With music on the menu, learning's really no mystery. When you're in conjunction, junction, fun's your function. Picking up some knowledge, rockin' round the clock. Accumulating power, watching schoolhouse rock. Hey, Chef, what's the special today? Homemade apple pie with a side of America. Rock! America Rock starts with No More Kings. Mission and a splashing over the horizon, what can it be? The pilgrims sailed the sea to find a place to call their own. In their ship Mayflower, they hoped to find a better home. They finally knocked on Plymouth Rock, and someone said, we're there. It may not look like home, but at this point, I don't care. Oh, they were missing Mother they swore their loyalty until the very end. Anything you say, King, it's okay, King. You know it's kind of scary on your own. Gonna build a new land the way we planned. Could you help us run it till it's grown? They planted corn, you know. They built their houses one by one. And bit by bit they worked until the colonies were done. They looked around, yeah, up and down. Hooray! If the king could only see us now, he would be proud of us today. <laughs> they knew that now they'd run their own land. But George III still vowed he'd rule them to the end. Anything I say, do it my way now. Anything I say, do it my way. Don't you get to feeling independent? Cause I'm gonna force you to obey. He taxed their property, he didn't give them any choice. And back in England, he didn't give them any voice. That's called taxation without representation, and it's not fair. But when the colonies complained, the king said, I don't care. He even has the nerve to tax our cup of tea. To put it kindly, King, we really don't agree. Gonna show you how we feel. We're gonna dump this tea and turn this harbor into the biggest cup of tea in history. They wanted no more mothering England. They knew the time had come for them to take command. It's very clear you're being unfair, King. No matter what you say, we won't obey. Gonna hold a revolution now, King, and we're gonna run it all away with no, no more, more king. king. We're gonna elect a president. No, no more king. He's gonna do what the people want. No, no more king. We're gonna run things our way. No more king. Nobody's gonna tell us what to do. Rocking and a rolling, swishing and a splashing over the horizon. What can it be? Looks like it's going to be a free country. Now, let's see some fireworks. Ooh, there's gonna be fireworks. Fireworks! On the 4th of July. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue fireworks like diamonds in the sky. Diamonds in the sky! We're gonna shoot, shoot the entire works. works on fireworks that really show, oh yeah. yeah. We declared extra, our liberty extra, 200 extra. years ago. In 1776, fireworks. there were fireworks too. Red, white, and blue. The original colonists, you know their tempers blue. Red, white, and blue. 
like thomas paine once wrote it's only common sense that if a government won't give you your basic rights you better get another government and though some people tried to fight it well a committee was formed to write it Benjamin Franklin, Philip Livingston, John Adams, Roger Sherman, Thomas Jefferson, they got it done. The Declaration, uh -huh, the Declaration of Independence in 1776. The Continental Congress said that we were free. Said we had the right of life and liberty. And the pursuit of happiness. Ooh, when England heard the news, they blew their stack. But the colonists lit the fuse. There'd be no turning back. They'd had enough of injustice now. But even if it really hurts, oh yeah, if you don't give us our freedom now, you're gonna see some fireworks. And on the fourth of July. And 56 names underlined it. And now to honor those first 13 states, we turn the sky into a birthday cake. They got it done. The Declaration, uh -huh, the Declaration of Independence in 1776. Continental Congress said that we were free. The right of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if there's one thing that makes me happy, then you know that it's <gasps> there's gonna be fireworks. How would you like to hear the shot heard round the world? The British are coming, the British are coming. Now the ride of Paul Revere set the nation on its ear. And the shot at Lexington heard round the world. When the British fired in the early dawn, the war of independence had begun. The die was cast, the rebel flag unfurled. And on to Concord marched the foe to seize the arsenal. There you know, waking folks and searching all around. Till our militia stopped them in their tracks At the old North Bridge we turned them back And chased those red coats back to Boston town And the shot heard round the world Was the start of the revolution The men and men were ready on the move Take your powder, take your gun Report to General Washington Hurry men, there's not an hour to lose Now at famous Bunker Hill even though we lost, it was quite a thrill. The rebel Colonel Prescott proved he was wise. Outnumbered and low on ammunition as the British stormed his position. He said, hold your fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Though the next few years were rough, General Washington's men proved they were tough. Those hungry, ragged boys would not be beat. One night they crossed the Delaware, surprised the Hessians in their lair, and at Valley Force they just bundled up their feet. Now the shot heard round the world was the start of the revolution. The men and men were ready on the move. Take your blanket, take your son, report to General Washington. We've got our rights and now it's time to prove. They showed such determination that they won the admiration of countries across the sea like France and Spain. Who loaned the colony ships and guns and put the British on the run and the Continental Army on its feet again? And though they lost some battles to the Americans swore they see it through. Their raiding parties kept up hit and run. At Yorktown, the British could not retreat. Bottled up by Washington and the French fleet, Cornwallis surrendered, and finally we had won. Hooray! Long shot heard round the world. To the end of the revolution, the Continental Railroad was born. Hooray! Long shot heard round the world. To the end of the revolution, the Continental Railroad took the day. And the father of our country beat the British there at Yorktown and brought freedom. 
The Preamble. Hey, do you know about the USA? Do you know about the government? Can you tell me about the Constitution? Hey, learn about the USA. In 1787, I'm told our founding fathers did agree to write a list of principles for keeping people free. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. And so our people spelled it out, the things that we should be. And they put those principles down on paper and called it the Constitution. And it's been helping us run our country ever since then. The first part of the Constitution is called the Preamble and tells what those founding fathers set out to do. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare at hand, secure the blessings of liberty. To ourselves and our posterity do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. In 1787, I'm told our founding fathers all sat down and wrote a list of principles that's known the world around. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. And so our people spelled it out. They wanted a land of liberty. And the preamble goes like this. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. Provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Everybody needs a little elbow room. One thing you will discover when you get next to one another is everybody needs some elbow room, elbow room. It's nice when you're kind of cozy, but not when you're tangled nose to nosey. Oh, everybody needs some elbow, needs a little elbow room. That's how it was in the early days of the USA. The people kept coming to settle, though the East was the only place there was to go. The president was Thomas Jefferson. He made a deal with Napoleon. How'd you like to sell a mile or two? Or three, or a hundred, or a thousand. And so, in 1803, the Louisiana Territory was sold to us without a fuss and gave us lots of elbow room. Oh, elbow room. Elbow room, got to, got to get us some elbow room. It's the West or bust, but in God we trust, there's a new land out there. Lewis and Clark volunteered to go. Goodbye, good luck, wear your overcoat. They prepared for good times and for bad, and for bad. They hired a sack of Jewia to be their guide. She led them all across the countryside, reached the coast, and found the most elbow room we've ever had. The way was opened up for folks with yeah. bravery. Oh, there were plenty of fights to win land rights, but the West was meant to be. It was a manifest destiny. The trappers, traders, and the peddlers, the politicians. 
politicians and the settlers, they got there by any way they could. Any way they could. to west and soon the rest was opened up for opened up for good and now we jet from east to west goodbye new york hello l.a but it took those early folks to open up the way now we've got a lot of room to be a growing from sea to shining sea guess that we have got our elbow room elbow Crowded up together, I'm sure we'll find some elbow room up, up on the moon. Oh, elbow room, elbow room. Got to, got to get us some elbow room. It's the moon or bust. In God we trust. There's a new land up there. The Great American Melting Pot. My grandmother came from Russia, a satchel on her knee. My grandfather had his father's cap he brought from Italy. They'd heard about a country where life might let them win. They paid the fare to America, and there they melted in. was founded by the English. But also by the Germans, Dutch, and French. The principal still sticks, our heritage is mixed. So, so any kid, kid could be, be the, the president. president. You simply melt right in. It doesn't matter what your skin, it doesn't matter where you're from or your religion. You jump right into the great American melting pot. Great American melting pot. Ooh, what a stew. White and blue. America was the new world, and Europe was the old. America was the land of hope, or so the legend told. On steamboats by the millions, in search of honest pay, those 19th century immigrants sailed to reach the USA. Lovely Lady Liberty. Book of recipes and the finest one she's got is the Great American Melting Pot. The Great American Melting Pot. What good ingredients, liberty and immigrants? They brought the country's customs, their language and their ways. They filled the factories to the soil, helped build the USA. She has to tell how great to be American and something else as well. Lovely Lady Liberty with her book of recipes and the finest one she's got is the Great American Melting Pot. 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 Mother Necessity. Mother Necessity with her good intentions. Where would this country be without her invention? Oh, things were rotten in the land of cotton until Whitney made the cotton gin. Now old times there will soon be forgotten for it did the work of a hundred men. Mother Necessity, where would we be? Mother Edison worked late each night. It went well until the fading light. 
Little Thomas Alva Edison said, I'll grow up to be a great inventor and I'll make a lamp to help my mommy see. Wowie, what an excellent application of electricity. He worked hard and pulled a switch. He was smart and very rich. Mother necessity, help us to see. Now the mother of Samuel Morse. Always sent the lad out on a horse. Look, look, Take a message to Miss Peavy on the far side of the pike. Spread the word about the quilting be next Saturday night. Little Samuel started thinking of a way to send a message. Though he'd never met a horse he didn't like. Uh. Mother necessity. Elias, can you help me with my sewing? Mother dear, I'll fulfill your fondest wishes. Elias, how? This machine I've made will keep your sewing really flowing. In fact, we'll keep the whole nation in stitches. Ah, Mother necessity, where would we be? Bring me on the Alexander Graham Bell. Thank you, Alexander, for the phone. Marconi gave us wireless radio. When Henry Ford cranked up his first telephone. When Samuel Slater showed us how the factories go. And all the iron and all the coal and steel and Yankee, don't you know? They, they made this country really grow, 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 grow. With mother necessity, and where would we be without the inventions of your progeny? Now, suffering till suffrage. Now you have heard of women's rights and how we tried to reach new heights if we're all created equal. That's us too. But you will probably uh, uh, not recall that it's not been too, too. too long at all since we even had the right to cast a vote. Well, well, sure, some men bowed down and called us missus. Yeah. Let us hang the watch out and wash the dishes. Uh, but when the time rolled around to elect a president, what did they say, sister? What did they say? They said, oh, see you later. And don't forget my, my, my mashed potatoes Cause I'm going downtown to cast my vote for president But we were suffering until suffering oh. Not a woman you could vote, no matter what age oh. And the 19th Amendment struck down that restrictive rule oh, yeah. And now we pull down Bye. on the lever Bye. Cast our ballot to improve our country, state, county, town, and school. Those pilgrim women who, who braved the foe, they cook, cook, cook. could cook the turkey, but they, they could not vote. Even Betsy Ross, who showed the flag, was left behind that first election day. What a shame, sisters! Then Susan B., Anthony, yeah. and Julia Howe, Lucretia, Lucretia Ma, and others. They showed us how they carried signs and marched in lines until it long last the law was passed. Oh, we were suffering until suffering. Oh. Not a woman you could vote no matter what age. Then the 19th Amendment struck down that restrictive rule. Oh, yeah. And now we pull down.
I'm just a bill. You sure got to climb a lot of steps to get to this Capitol building here in Washington. Well, I wonder who that sad little scrap of paper is. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long journey to the Capitol City. It's a long, long wait while I'm sitting in committee. But I know I'll be a law someday, at least I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. Gee, Bill, you certainly have a lot of patience and courage. Well, I got this far. When I started, I wasn't even a bill. I was just an idea. Some folks back home decided they wanted a law passed, so they called their local congressman, and he said, you're right, there ought to be a law. Then he sat down and wrote me out and introduced me to Congress, and I became a bill. And I'll remain a bill until they decide to make me a law. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I got as far as Capitol Hill. Well, now I'm stuck in committee, and I'll sit here and wait while a few key congressmen discuss and debate whether they should let me be a law. I hope and pray that they will, but today I am still just a bill. Listen to those congressmen arguing. Is all that discussion and debate about you? Yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones. Most bills never even get this far. I hope they decide to report on me favorably, otherwise I may die. Die? Yeah, die in committee. Oh, but it looks like I'm going to live. Now I go to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. If they vote yes, what happens? Then I go to the Senate and the whole thing starts all over again. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And if they vote for me on Capitol Hill, well, then I'm off to the White House where I'll wait in a line with a lot of other bills for the president to sign. And if he signs me, then I'll be a law. I hope and pray that he will. But today, I am still just a bill. You mean even if the whole Congress says you should be a law, the president can still say no? Yes, that's called a veto. If the president vetoes me, I have to go back to Congress and they vote on me again, and by that time, you're so By old, that time, you? it's very unlikely that you become a law. It's not easy to become a law, is it? No, but how I hope and pray that I will, but today I am still just a bill. He signed your bill, now you're a law. Oh, yes! And last, the three-ring government. Gonna have a three-ring circus someday. People will say it's a fine one, son. Gonna have a three-ring circus someday. People will come from miles around. Lions, tigers, acrobats, and jugglers, and clowns galore. Tightrope walkers, pony riders, elephants, and so much more. Guess I got the idea right here. School felt like a fool when they called my name. Talking about the government and how it's arranged, divided in three like a circus. Ring one, executive, two is legislative, that's Congress. Ring three, judiciary. See, it's kind of like my circus. Circus, step right up and visit ring number one. Just begun, meet the president. I am here to see that the laws get done. The ringmaster of the government. On with the show! Hurry, hurry, hurry to ring number two. See what they do in the Congress. Passing laws and juggling bills. Oh, it's quite a thrill in the Congress. Focus your attention on ring number three. The judiciary's in the spotlight. The courts take the laws and they tame the crimes. Balancing the wrongs with your rights. No one part can be more powerful than any other is. Each controls the other, you see. And that's what we call checks and balances. 
but his act is part of the show and no one's job is more important the audience is kind of like the country you know keeping an eye on their performance bring one executive to his legislator that's congress bring three judiciary see it's kind of like my circus my circus i'm gonna have a three ring circus someday people will say it's a fine one son but until i get it i'll do my thing with government it's got free Your body grows bigger. Your mind must flower. It's great to learn. Cause knowledge is power. In Schoolhouse Rocky, the chip on the block of your favorite schoolhouse, Schoolhouse Rock. Come on, let's follow them down to that place of renown. They call it the Conjunction Junction Diner. With Schoolhouse Rocky and friends, you know the fun never ends. Cause everyone's a Schoolhouse Rock headliner. Extra! Rocky gets the diner cooking in short order when he feeds that video jukebox and nickels, dimes, and quarters. Conjunction Junction, what's your function? Working up multiplication to music. Rockin' with grammar and science and history. With music on the menu, learning's really no mystery. When you're in Conjunction Junction, fun's your function. Picking up some knowledge, rockin' round the clock. Accumulating power, watching schoolhouse rock. Hey, Chef, what's the special today? Alphabet soup du jour with a side of grammar. Rock. To begin our show, unpack your adjectives. <laughs> Camping last spring Saw people, places, and things We barely had a ride Friends ask us to describe The people, places, and every last thing So we unpacked our adjectives I unpacked frustrating first Reached in and found the word worst Then I picked soggy and Next I picked foggy and Then I was ready to tell them my tale Cause I'd unpacked my adjectives Adjectives are words you use to really describe things Handy words to carry around Days are sunny or they're rainy they're brainy. Adjectives can show you which way. Adjectives are often used to help us compare things. To say how thin, how fat, how short, how tall. Girls who are tall can get taller. Boys who are small can get smaller. Till one is the tallest, another's the smallest of all. We hiked along without care. Then we ran into a his lair and described him with adjectives. Whoa! Boy, that was 
just one big ugly bear. You can even make adjectives out of the other parts of speech, like verbs or nouns. All you have to do is tack on an ending, like ick or ish or eric. For example, this boy can grow up to be a huge man, but still have a boyish face. Boy is a noun, but the ending ish makes it an adjective, boyish. That describes the huge man's face. Get it? Next time you go on a trip, remember this little tip. The minute you get back, they'll ask you this and that. Next, lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. Ready, Pop? Yep. Ready, son? Uh huh. Let's go. Let's go. One, two. Lolly, 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 lolly get your adverbs here. Lolly, 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 got some adverbs here. Come on down to Lolly's, get the adverbs here. You're, You're going, going to need if you write or read or even think about it. Lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. Got a lot of lolly jolly adverbs here. Anything you need and we can make it absolutely clear. An adverb is a word. That's all it is, and there's a lot of them. That modifies a verb. Sometimes a verb, sometimes. It modifies an adjective or else another adverb. And so you see, that is positively very, very necessary. Lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. Father, son, and lolly selling adverbs here. Got a lot of adverbs and we make it clear. So come to lolly. Hello, folks. This is Lolly Sr. saying we have every adverb in the book, so come on down and look. Hello, folks. Lolly Jr. here. Suppose your house needs painting. How are you going to paint it? That's where the adverb comes in. We can also give you a special intensifier so you can paint it very neatly or rather sloppily. Oh, how? Suppose you're going nut gathering. Your buddy wants to know where and when. Use an adverb and tell him. Get your adverb. Use, use it with an adjective. It says much more. Anything described can be described some more. Anything you'd ever need is in the store. And so you choose very carefully every word you use. Use it with a verb. It tells us how you did. Where it happened, where you're going, where you've been. Use it with another adverb that's the end and even more. How, where, or when, condition or reason, these questions are answered when you use an adverb. Come and get it, lolly, 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 get your adverbs here. Quickly, 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 get those adverbs here. Slowly, surely, really learn your adverbs here. You're, You're going, going to need them if you read them, if you write or talk or think about them. If it's an adverb, we have it at Lolly's. Bring along your old adjectives, too, like slow, soft, and sure. We'll fit them out with our L-Y attachment and make perfectly good adverbs out of them. Get your adverbs here. Lots of good tricks in Lolly's, so come on down. Lolly, Lolly, Lolly. Adverbs deal with manner, place, time. Lolly, Lolly, Lolly. Condition, reason. Father, son, and Lolly. Comparison, contrast. Lolly, Lolly, Lolly. Enrich your language with adverbs. Lolly, Lolly, Lolly. Besides, they're absolutely free. Lolly, Lolly, Lolly. At your service. Indubitably. You've been waiting for Conjunction Junction. Conjunction Junction, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction Junction, how's that function? I got three favorite cars that get most of my job done. Conjunction Junction, what's their function? I got and, button and or, they'll get you pretty far. And, that's an additive, like this and that. But, that's sort of the opposite, not this, but that. And then there's or, O-R, when you have a choice like this or that. 
Junction, 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 what's your function? Hooking up two boxcars, making them run right. Milk and honey, bread and butter, peas and rice. Hey, that's nice. Dirty butt, happy digging and scratching. Losing your shoe and a button or two. He's poor but honest, sad but true. boo -hoo 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 -hoo. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up two cars to one when you say something like this. Choice, either now or later, or no choice. Neither now nor ever. Hey, that's clever. Eat this or that, grow thin or fat. Never mind, I wouldn't do that. I'm fat enough now. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up phrases and clauses that balance like out of the frying pan and into the fire. He cut loose the sandbags, but the balloon wouldn't go any higher. Let's go up to the mountains or down to the seas. You should always say thank you or at least say please. What's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses in complex sentences like In the mornings when I'm usually wide awake I love to take a walk through the gardens and down by the lake Where I often see a duck and a drake And I wonder as I walk by just what they'd say if they could speak Although I know that's an absurd thought Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up cars and making them function. Conjunction, junction, how's that function? I like tying up words and phrases and clauses. Conjunction, junction, watch that function. I'm gonna get you there if you're very careful. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? I'm going to get you there if you're very careful. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? I'm going to get you there if you're very careful. And now, interjections. With one small injection While Reginald uttered some interjections Hey, that's smart! Ouch, that hurts! Yeah, that's not fair! Give the guy a shot down there! Interjections Hey! So excitement Yeah! Emotion, Ouch! They're generally set apart from a sentence By an exclamation point Or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong mm. Though Geraldine played hard to get Geraldo knew he'd woo her, yes, he showed his affection, despite her objections, and Geraldine hollered some interjections. Well, you've got some nerve. Oh, I've never been so insulted in all my life. Hey, you're kind of cute. Interjections, well, so excitement, oh, or emotion, hey. they're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point. Or back home when the feeling's not as strong. Ready. So when you're happy, Hooray! or sad, Aww. or frightened, Eek! or mad, Rat! or excited, wow, or glad, hey, an interjection starts a sentence right. <laughs> the game was tied at seven on. Uh -huh. When Franklin found he had the ball, he made a connection in the other direction, and the crowd started shouting out interjections. Ah, oh, you threw the wrong way. Darn, you just lost the game. Hooray, I'm for the other team. Interjections. Ah, oh. excitement. Darn. Hooray. It's generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point, or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong. So when you're happy, Hooray! or sad, Aww. or frightened, Eek! or mad, Rat! or excited, wow. or glad, hey! an interjection starts a sentence right. Interjections, hey! so excitement, hey! or emotion, hey! they're generally set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point, or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong. Interjections, short excitement, or emotion. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Darn, that's the end.
friend. Rufus, Xavier, Sarsaparilla. Now I have a friend named Rufus, Xavier, Sarsaparilla. And I can say that Rufus found a kangaroo. They found a Rufus home, and now that kangaroo belongs to Rufus, Xavier, Sarsaparilla. I could say that, but I don't have to. Cause I got pronouns I can say He found a kangaroo that followed him home And now it is his You see, huh? He, him, and his Our pronouns replacing the noun Rufus Xavier Sarsaparilla A very proper noun And it is a pronoun Replacing the noun Kangaroo How common has a sister named Rafaela Gabriella Sarsaparilla. If she found a kangaroo, I'd say to you, she found a kangaroo that followed her home, and now it is hers. But I can't say that, because she found an odd vibe that fell in love with her, and they're so happy. And my name's Albert Andrea Samadilla, no relation to the Sarsaparillas. Because of pronouns, I can say, I wish she would find a rhinoceros for me, and we'd be happy. You see, a pronoun was made to take the place of a noun. Cause saying all those nouns over and over can really wear you down. Now I can tell you Raffaella, Gabriella, and Rufus, Xavier, Sarsaparilla, and Albert Andrea Samadilla found an aardvark, a kangaroo, and a rhinoceros. And now that aardvark and that kangaroo and that rhinoceros belong respectively to Raffaella, Gabriella, Sarsaparilla, and Rufus, Xavier, Sarsaparilla, and Albert Andrea Samadilla. Because of pronouns, I can say in this way, we found them and they found us and now they are ours and we're so happy. Thank you, pronouns. You see, a pronoun was made to take the place of a noun. Cause saying all those nouns over and over can really wear you down. Sometimes when we take them all on the bus, people really raise a fuss. They start shouting out a lot of pronouns at us like, who brought that rhinoceros on this bus and what made that horrible noise and which one of them getting off first? Who, what, and which has special pronouns that can ask a question in a sense where you do not know the name of the noun. But I know I have mine and she has hers. And he has his, do you have yours? They love us and we love them. But ours is theirs, that's how it is with friends. And pronouns, you are really friends, yeah. Cause saying all those nouns over and over can really wear you down. What's happening next? Verbs, that's what's happening. I get my thing in action To be, to see, to feel, to live that's what's happening I put my heart in action To run, to go, to get, to give that's where I find satisfaction, yeah. yeah. To search, to find, to have, to hold. Burn, to be bold. When I use my imagination, Burn. I think, I plot, I plan, I dream, turning in towards creation. Burn. I make, I write, I dance, I sing. When I'm feeling really active, Burn. I run, I ride, I swim, I fly. Other times when life is easy, oh. I rest, I sleep, I sit, I lie. Bird, that's what's happening. I can take a noun and bend it. Give me a noun. Basketball, break and plow. Make it a verb and really send it. Show me how. Oh, I don't know my own power. And being and doing and saying a verb expresses action, being or a state of being. A verb makes a statement. Yeah, a verb tells it like it is. I can tell you when it's happening. Past, present, future, tense. Tell you more about what's happening. Say it so it makes some sense. Oh, I can tell you who is happening. Bird, you're so intense. Hey, every 
every sentence has a subject. Now, person, place, a thing. Find that subject. Where's the action? Verb can make a subject sing. Take a subject. What is it? What? What's done to it? What, What does it say? Ooh, I can question like, what is it? Verb, you're so demanding. I can order like, go get it. Verb, you're so demanding. When I hit, I need an object. Verb, hit, hit the ball. When I see, I see the object. Do you see that first ball? If you can see it, then put the ball on the fence, man. My thing in action <laughs> To work, to play, to live, to love A noun is a person, place, or thing. Every person you can know and every place that you can go and anything that you can show, you know their nouns. A noun's a special kind of word, it's any name you ever heard, I find it quite interesting. A noun's a person, place, or thing. Oh, I took a train, took a train to another state. The flora and the fauna that I saw were really great. But when I saw some bandits chasing the train, I was wishing I was back home again. Took a train, took a train to another state. Well, every person you can know, like a bandit or an engineer, and every place that you can go, like a state or a home, and anything that you can show, like animals and plants or a train, you know their nouns. You know their nouns. Oh, Mrs. Jones is a lady on Hudson Street. She sent her dog to bark at my brother and me. We gave her dog a big fat bone and now he barks at Mrs. Jones. She's a lady who lives on Hudson Street. Well, every person you can know. Mrs. Jones, a lady or a brother. Every place that you can go. Like a street or a corner. Anything that you can show. Like a dog or a bone. You know their nouns. You know their nouns. Oh, I took a ferry to the Statue of Liberty. Friend was waiting there for me. He took an early ferry. He went for a walk on the island, you know, and in the middle of summer it started to snow. And I took a ferry to the Statue of Liberty. Well, every person you can know, like a friend or the captain of a ship, every place that you can go, an island or a sea, anything that you can show, like a statue, a ferry, or snow. You know their nouns. You know their nouns. Oh, I put a dime in the drugstore record machine. Oldie Goldie started playing, if you know what I mean. I heard Chubby Checker, he was doing the twist and the Beatles and the monkeys, it goes like this. I put a dime in the drugstore record machine. Well, every person you can know. The Beatles and the monkeys, Chubby Checker. Every place that you can go. Like a neighborhood or a store. And anything that you can show. Like a dime or a record machine. Do you know their nouns? A noun's a special kind of word. It's any name you ever heard. I find it quite interesting. A noun's a person, place, or thing. A noun is a person, place, or thing. And now for those funny little words, busy prepositions. Like a butterfly or like a bee, like an ant as busy as can be, these little words we call the busy peas. Preposition! Nine or ten of them do most all of the work. Of, on, to, with, in, from, by, for, at, over, across. And many others do their job which is simply to connect their noun or pronoun object to some other word in the sentence. Busy peas, if you please. 
On the top is where you are. The top relates to where? With a friend you'll travel far. With a friend you'll go. If you try, you know that you can fly over the rainbow. Over the rainbow is where you can fly. Busy prepositions, always on the go. Like a bunch of busy bees, floating pollen on the breeze, buzzing over the meadows, beyond the forest, through the trees, into the beehive. Busy, busy into bees. Beyond, over, on, through. Busy prepositions, always out in front. On the edges, in the crack, around the corner, from the back, in between the action. Stating clearly to your satisfaction The location and direction Prepositions give specific information Though little words they are They never stand alone Gathering words behind them You soon will see how they have grown into a parade A prepositional phrase With a noun or at least a pronoun Bringing up the rear a little phrase of two or three or four or more words. Prepositions, attention, forward march. Busy prepositions, always on the march. Like a horde of soldier ants, inching bravely forward on the slimmest chance that they might better their positions. Busy, busy prepositions. In the air, on the ground, everywhere. The sun sank lower in the west, in the west it sank. And it will rise in the morning and will bring the light of day. We say the sun comes up in the east every day. In the east it rises. Busy prepositions, busy, busy, busy. On the top is where you are. On the top. If you try, you know that you can fly. Fly where? Over the rainbow. And finally, the tale of Mr. Morton. This is the tale of Mr. Morton. Mr. Morton is who? He is the subject of our tale, and the predicate tells what Mr. Morton must do. Mr. Morton walked down the street. Mr. Morton walked. Mr. Morton talked to his cat. Mr. Morton talked. Hello, cat. You look good. Mr. Morton was lonely. Mr. Morton was. Mr. Morton is the subject of the sentence and what the predicate says he does. Mr. Morton knew just one girl. Mr. Morton knew. Mr. Morton grew flowers for Pearl. Mr. Morton grew. Mr. Morton was very shy. Mr. Morton was. Mr. Morton is the subject of the sentence and what the predicate says he does. The subject is a noun. That's a person, place, a thing. It's who or what the sentence is about. And the predicate is the verb. That's the action word that gets this subject up and out. Mr. Morton wrote Pearl of Poems. Mr. Morton wrote Pearl replied in the afternoon Pearl replied by a note <laughs> Mr. Morton was very nervous Mr. Morton was Mr. Morton is the subject of the sentence And what the predicate says he does The cat stretched, the sun beat down A neighbor chased his kid Come here kid, come on Each sentence is completed When you know what the subject did Mr. Morton knocked on her door Mr. Morton knocked Mr. Morton sat on her porch Yes, he just sat there and rocked Mr. Morton was a nervous man When she opened up the door, he ran Mr. Morton climbed up his stairs Mr. Morton climbed Mr. Morton rhymed pretty words 
Mr. Morton ran. Mr. Morton was lonely. Mr. Morton was. And Jill Pearl showed up with a single rose. Who says women can't propose? Now Mr. Morton is happy. And Pearl and the cat are too. They're the subject of the sentence. And what the predicate says, hey, do. 